Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, good morning. This is going to be really, really fun. So um, I've had a ton of requests for Vagabond. I've never read the, the manga. Um, I'm really excited to check it out. I have checked out the art before, um, but I'm not super familiar with it. And uh, yeah, let's do this. So um, Vagabond is by um, Inoue Takehiko. And uh, hopefully I didn't butcher that too bad. I never know. Sometimes they switch it around. Takehiko Inoue. I've seen it written, so um, let me know which which is the proper way to say it. It's so confusing. But anyway, all right, so uh, I pulled uh, a series of images that I thought were really, really awesome, and most are in black and white, but uh, this is a cover for um, the 35th uh, collection, and it is really, really nice. This stuff is awesome. And... Uh, you know, I did a video of Berserk uh, maybe a week back, and uh, I'm trying to get into this stuff. I mean, not trying, but I mean, I'm getting into this stuff more and more and trying to branch out and see a lot of different art. Um, and, uh, yeah, the art level of artistry in this book is really incredible. This is great. Let's go full screen mode. And, uh, man, it's such a solid little drawing the little washes it's so easy to gloss over something like this but this is a really really nice little little um like car cartoon image and the brush inking and stuff like that is just phenomenal you'll see what i'm talking about as we go through more of this um the scans look a little tiny bit dark at times but um if anyone's read it and can recommend the best collections that have the best reproductions let me know because i know watching tons of manga reviews that people will um you know, there'll be like a superior edition of it that just looks the best, maybe is the largest size and stuff like that. So uh, I would definitely be interested in checking those out. Um, it's funny because I'm like, oh, oh man, I'm going to need to make room for more books. <laughs> but it's okay. So this one thing that I noticed also going through the book is the style will vary a little bit in terms of the mediums that, that uh, he uses. Um, and uh, from what I understand, this book... Um, had at some point a very, very long hiatus, but uh, there's so much of it out there. This is really, really cool. Um, you know, there's so much, if you're a new reader, to check out that I don't think that for someone like me just getting into it, I mean, that wouldn't affect my enjoyment of the series. And let me know, too, would you recommend that I read Berserk first? Or Vagabond first, if you know the two series. I know that they're different, but I mean, if you were going to hop into one of those two, which way would you go? I'm assuming this is more realistic and quite a bit more gritty, just based on all the stuff that I've seen. And Berserk looks a little more like, almost like parallel worlds or something like that. So, At times, the work reminded me a little bit of uh, Blade of the Immortal, but I think it's just my lack of knowledge of the stuff, really, is I'm just grasping to try to compare it to something. The stuff is awesome, though. Man, the way he draws this guy is great. Um, you know, obviously, I'm familiar with Lone Wolf and Cub, and so at times it will remind me of that, but again, I think it's just more my lack of, of experience and, you know, sort of things to ground it. Because that's really what comparisons are when people get into stuff is they're trying to ground it in their mind um, to, you know, something that they're familiar with. This looks like Mignola. This looks like, you know, Atomo, whatever it is. It's just you're trying to place it in a category. Man, these little he is really, really good at cartooning heads. These are awesome. They're real solid. And again, the reproductions aren't so great on this. But uh you know, this is the first time that I've really seen these issues. I definitely, it was, what's weird is the stuff that I saw looked more like this. So there was this realistic and super, super gritty, like, war scene that I saw. That was my first sort of, when I Googled it maybe seven or eight months ago. This is great right here. It's pretty inspiring. This stuff definitely makes me interested in trying um, uh, some of these more chaotic uh, effects that they use. Because I've always liked that look, but it's fun, you know, when you see someone execute it quite well in a comic, um, you know, it reminds you, you, you know, don't gloss over that just because you don't see it all the time in books. Um, 
Well, this stuff is great. It's really, really interesting too. I'm assuming that there's a little bit of um, screen tone over this. So it's like kind of a dry brush inking effect with a little bit of screen tone. And then you can kind of see when he doesn't use screen tone, but this has clearly got a little bit of screen tone on it. And if, if anyone has worked with screen tone, it's been so long for me, I was trying to remember, can you use white out over screen tone? Like white acrylic paint over it? I, I'm remembering that I could, but I literally have not used it in so long, I can't remember. But that's a huge thing, because if it's too waxy to have white out over it, that would be kind of a bummer. But it seems like these are too. Look at this piece, isn't this great? And this stuff looks drawn to me. A lot of times now what you'll see is, you know, artists will take a photograph of like a forest and there's different cutout tools and halftone patterns and stuff that you can use. And it sort of will turn it into something like this. And it, it can look cool. I mean, I get, I get why people use it, but I mean, definitely there's a level of artistry to when you actually draw this stuff that's a little more exciting. This is really great, man. The level of diffusion that he uses. So here, I'll kind of show you what's going on because I've done a lot of black and white art myself um, that's pretty detailed. He keeps the values on this guy dark. I pulled out so that you can read the values and not get so caught up in the detail, but this guy is very, very dark. So he pops quite a bit. He frames him with these darker colors, but anything else, there's two ways you can use black. You can use black to direct the eye or to avert the eye. So what he's using it is, he's using it as a framing element, but he keeps it quite balanced. He's pulling you all this way and then keeps it here. But you see what I mean? He diffuses the background here so that it's light and it really makes him pop. And um, then he's got these interesting like branches on the ground, but uh, it's a really effective use of, of value, meaning levels of gray and black and white. Yeah, see, this stuff reminds me a little bit of Blade of the Immortal, but, I mean, again, I think that this probably came long before that, so it's possible that Blade of the Immortal could have even been inspired by this. I really am going to need more bookshelves, though, because there's no way that I won't want to get some of this stuff. This is cool. But, yeah, this... Based on what I saw, this is a pretty adult manga. It's definitely not for like kids. Man, look at that. That's so cool. He's got that great like light hitting his face and just casting shadows. And this is really cool too. And again, great, great little cartoon things. That's funny because that almost looks like the kid's head on the cover. If you look at that shot, that's really, really similar. But he just had wash and stuff on it. I wonder if it's the same character. I can't remember how much hair the um, the thing on that colored cover had, but that is a really, really similar little drawing. This is neat. And this to me looks like it was pen and ink, and then again, a, like a screen tone was possibly applied over it. But it's the scans are so pixely, it's a little hard to tell. This is great too. Man, look at that. These trees are great. Let me see. Something. Yeah, that is so badass. Look at these guys. These little drawings are so cool. Man, what's crazy is, okay, so when I was opening this, this looked good. How many scans have we looked at? This is looking better and better every time I see a few more pages. I can't even imagine reading it too, because I think when you read a book like this, it, go, it just amplifies the quality of the art so much because I've found that where sometimes I'll glance at a book not not referring to this but you know what I mean you see a comic book and people are raving about it and you just look at the art just decide if you even want to hop in and you'll go eh, you know the art looks good but then you read it and you go oh man like the art was so perfect for the story it's, it's a fun connection that you make as I've always said I mean Oh, it's funny too because I'm setting up to do some Punisher uh, videos and um, that was the thing that I would say about the Punisher is they would have these short arcs of like one to three issue stories. This is really, really cool. Um, and uh, sometimes the artists would switch. And to me it wasn't so much about who was the best artist but just the artist that I thought 
like connected with the characters the best and so you might have someone that draws better but the Punisher all of a sudden looked like a different actor and it wasn't as like uh, you know it didn't hit you the same way this is cool but yeah if you haven't checked out my first reaction to the um oh, this is so cool uh, the Berserk manga you could definitely check that out too it's interesting, too. I'm going to plug my Patreon really quick. So I have a Patreon. We're closing in, if we haven't hit it, 200 patrons. So, you know, I have very low tiers for people that get in. It's basically a tip jar, $1 to $5. And you have full access. For a dollar, you can get in and see everything. There's between four and 500 videos. And um, there's a review tier that's 20 bucks where I'll really go over your work and then a lesson tier. But what's interesting is, so I, I check, you know, I'll see other YouTube channels where they go, hey, you know, check out my Patreon. And I was looking at a guy who has literally 2.1 million subscribers on YouTube and his channel just is crushing it. And uh, he has a Patreon and I was like, oh man, I can't even imagine how many subs he has. He must have, you know, 2,000 easily. He only had 50 more than me. So I think it shows how quality my Patreon is. So definitely give it a, a, at least a consideration. And that's it for plugs. I really work hard to make it great. This is really cool. I love the way he draws this guy. Yeah, his little figures are good. I've talked about this before. For whatever reason, artists have... Uh, they tend to loosen up on little figures like this. And I'm, I'm really referring to American comic book artists. But, um, you know, it. there's something to this size figure that makes people draw better. God dang, this is so awesome. Man, that is so cool. Um, but, yeah, so it, it leads me to believe that, that uh, there is really something powerful. And if you have to draw a big image, you might it might behoove you to draw it, you know, smaller and then blow it up. I mean, artists have been doing that forever. But um, I just see enough indications of that, that artists seem to be a little bit more comfortable and confident with this size. God, that is so good. This is awesome. And then this is awesome. I love the way that it's so intense and there's so much detail and stuff like this. And yet that little bit of lightness that he put around him, no detail on that. And he's different shapes. Do you see most of the stuff is going either straight up and down or across and the rain's kind of coming at different angles. But because this guy has different directional shapes on him, that helps him pop too. It's the same with this. He, he, left a lot of black out around him and then the white of his skin really makes him pop but that is a great page jeez told you i'd pick some good ones oh man it was funny when i was looking at the small thumbnails i kind of thought these were skulls oh man this stuff is great Yeah, I thought he was sitting on like a thing of skulls. Kind of looks that way a little bit. It's got a creepy vibe to it. That's a nice upshot. Man, he's solid. Win. <laughs> okay, we can go kind of fast. This is nice. See, these are real dark scans. That's why I was asking if there's um, what people consider sort of the superior reproductions of it. Dude, this little guy is so cool. Yeah, I wish days were like 48 hours, so I would have 24 hours to work and sleep, and then another 24 hours in the day to, <laughs> to read. Oh, man. It's just, the days fly by. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And I had mentioned before, I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but I found a mountain climbing book that's like a, it's a, I think it's a high school student who, uh, ends up being like an extreme like rock climber oh my god the art is so good i'll definitely do a video of it um but uh yeah it is really amazing this is great look at that 
is so freaking epic. For people that like stuff like this, you are going to love Blaster Kid. And speaking of Blaster Kid, I'll give it a quick uh, mention. Um, so, obviously, with this COVID-19 thing, everybody is ramping up. And everybody, uh, all the people that are, you know, generally not as communicative are like, Hey, I'm starting a YouTube channel. I'm going to be doing a live stream. I'm going to be doing a chat. I mean, I've been on YouTube for four years. So, you already know that I I came here for completely different purposes. But, um. Yeah, so for for um, for Blaster Kid next week, I'll start turning the channel sort of towards that more, um, and uh, it will be really really fun. And I'll need your help uh, because I don't know a ton about crowdfunding and stuff like that. And so uh, you know, you guys can help educate me. I saw the Sean Gordon Murphy video, and it was it was a little challenging to watch, honestly. <laughs> So I was like, oh man. But anyway, but yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. This guy's cool. Look at his little hair there. I think as we go a little further, I swear I saw wash on some of these pages, but maybe I was, it might've been a different issue that I didn't grab as many scans from. Man, this is so dark. I couldn't even really clean this up in Photoshop. It's, I mean, I could level it up a little bit, but it's just a muddy, muddy scan. I'm sure these these have probably been making the rounds forever. This guy's cool. But yeah, let me know tier ideas that you would like for, like, what are your favorite tiers for crowdfunded books? Um, what are the perks that you like the most? And uh, my goal is to keep Blaster Kid around 80 pages. It would be a tra you know, a trade. I'm not doing a hardcover or anything like that. And uh, yeah, we'll build it together. Vagabond. A draft in the night. I've been showing people how to draw eyes in some Patreon lesson videos. You can feel the spherical quality of the eyeball. It's really important. Then you put the lids over it. I'll do I'll do a YouTube video of it. I that was kind of one of the things I thought would be kind of fun is while I'm working on Blaster Kid, I'm obviously obviously show process videos, but then I can do little like mini lessons, you know, like how to draw eyes better, or hair. There's a lot of questions that you get kind of all the time. Drawing hands better is a big one. Clothes. Um, so we can chip away at those. They'll be shorter videos, maybe like five to eight minutes. But uh, I think it'll be really helpful and uh, something fun to keep people um, drawing on their own, too. Because that's always been a big thing for me is it, I, I really kind of come online to sort of hang out with everyone. And I hope that everybody is, like, working on their art and having fun. So... Anyone who's followed me online knows that. I've been in fan groups forever. Since I've been online, I've always gone to where the fans are and people that are fans of the stuff that I'm a fan of. And I just want to hang out. And then the I feel fortunate that I've been able to work professionally. And so I try to help people. <laughs> right? I call it play it forward. <laughs> It's nice. He's got him looking up just enough where he doesn't have to deal with the chin starting to lift and also the, the hair on his chin helps too. But yeah, as your head starts to go up more, you start to see more of the underneath of the chin and it starts to get a little more complicated. This is nice. Oh man, look at that. That is so cool. Again, great, great drawing. So I wonder... It's hard to tell in these scans, but I mean, so this is, I'm assuming, screen tone paper laid over it. And then do you think that they do this with like a white brush, like a uh, brush with like white paint? The pixels are deceiving because it makes it look different. Maybe you can scratch that off. So the scan makes it look pixely, but <clears throat> maybe if you saw a real, <clears throat> excuse me, clean scan of it, it would, it would be more um, smooth. This is all really nice. 
Oh, she's cute. That's a nice little drawing. Yeah, this guy's an interesting combination of he can get tight and pretty clean and and like it just reads really so directly but then he's not shy about doing some stuff that's way more gritty this is really solid again nice solid hand it's got this nice plane on it i'm so tempted to do a draw over on this but i don't want to make the video too long that is another series i'm doing on patreon right now is i'm taking really complicated poses or very very dynamic poses and kind of showing how the um artist sets them up and what they're thinking and dealing with on the um structure of things people seem to like it already it's it i i knew they would because it's exciting to see something you know really really complex see this was the stuff that i was talking about it had like almost like a washy effect on it but something or an artist that they respect that looks like they do complicated work and you dissect a little bit that's really cool so I think we're about at the end of this video, but again, let me know which you would consider the best one to start with. If I was going to read either Berserk or Vagabond, and then um, that would be helpful. And then the best uh, collections to pursue of them, of both, if you if you know. That is so cool, man. That is really, really neat. I love the um, that choppy brush look that he got. That is great. This could be like a creepy moment in like The Walking Dead. <laughs> it's like, like a bunch of children zombies or something. That's cool. Seeing this again, like like for me not being as familiar with this work, it reminds me of um, the Metal Gear Solid artist. I have the art of Metal Gear Solid. Oh yeah, and this is I think the last piece. So all right, that was really really fun. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and uh, you know I apologize that I'm not more knowledgeable on it, but you know you have to start somewhere, and I'm not opposed or shy about saying that. Hey, I don't really under I don't know these books yet, but I'm interested in learning about them. So all right, I'll talk to y'all later. Have a great day, and uh, please smash the like and share somewhere at some point. All right, bye.